The following lecture is from my Udemy course, Complete 3D Animation Masterclass, Cree Animated Shorts. If you like my teaching style and are interested in taking your skills from intermediate or beginner to advanced 3D artists, consider enrolling in my course. Link in the bio. All right, so now that we have our test out, we have our AUV set up, we're ready to start our batch render. Now, there's a couple of things we're gonna to wanna to do. Uh, the first thing we wanna do is come to our common settings here, and we wanna change this over so it's going to create a multi-pass render. If you don't do this, it's going to create an even sequence for each individual AUV. And this is okay, but it makes it very hard to manage the files. And if you're moving into a node base editor like Nuke uh, for compositing, it's much better to have a single one where you can shuffle the channels out. With After Effects, it really doesn't matter. In some ways, it might be better to have the individual files, but we'll do the EXR just to have the ability to test the extractor and to do a standard industry workflow. So first, we're gonna to need to make sure we're in the right format. You'll see EXR is the default, so we're good to go. I like to switch my compression off here. It's currently using zip. What I like to do is add in a none, so that way we have no compression. And then down here, we need to turn merge AUVs on. That's gonna make it so AUVs are in a single file. We're gonna do a test render first. So with these outputs here, just leave those be. Uh, scrolling down, we can set our other parameters to be correct. So you'll see we have our camera set to shot cam. And in our presets, rather than setting this to HD 1080 right away, I'm actually gonna bump this down to HD 540 for the fastest render possible. Now, coming up here to the render menu, we can switch over from animation to rendering. We can go to the render menu, and in here we can access the sequence render. When you press render sequence, what this is going to do is it's going to launch the Maya render view and it's going to start rendering. Now we want to do this before we do anything else because the Maya render view has a tendency to not get the camera correct in terms of what we said here. It is notorious for using the last camera that was used in this render view and we don't know what that's going to be. In this case, it looks like it's the perspective. So you can see it's good that we rendered out that 540 render. It was nice and fast and we got that feedback quickly. We can also check in our project folder to make sure that this rendered correctly. So let's do that. If I go ahead and access my project for here and go into images, you'll see that we have this EXR here. And if we were to set that up in After Effects, we could confirm that it rendered correctly. Now I'm going to right click and delete this because we don't need this one. Now we need to make sure this is rendering the right camera. To do that, we can come to render go to render and select shot cam. And you're just gonna to wanna to let this render and finish. Now, unfortunately, there's a bug inside of Arnold where if you try to change it in this view, it crashes Maya. I've been trying that currently and uh, you guys didn't see this in the video format, but uh, Maya crashed on me three times trying it. So we're gonna try something different. Normally you would come in here to render render and you'd switch to shot cam and do a re-rendering and then render sequence again. But currently this is actually causing my Maya to crash. And I think it's a 2023 bug because they set it up so that the hardware 2.0 and the Arnold render are distinctively different inside of Maya. But simultaneously the render sequence uses the old Maya renderer. So it just seems like a bad setup. There might be a patch that fixes this, I'm not sure, but as a workaround, what we're going to try to do is swap this to hardware 2.0, since the Maya render view uses that, come here to render, switch to render, and shot cam, but in hardware 2.0, so the camera's set correctly. Now, with that set, what we can do is try re-rendering this, but with the render sequence, to see if it works. Notice it did switch my render settings over here to hardware 2.0. So I'll wanna swap those back to Arnold so it knows to use Arnold. And then we're going to come up here to render and render sequence again to see if that fixes it. So hopefully this workaround does, and it looks like it did. Uh, so if you're running into the same bug I am, give that a shot. I cannot tell you how annoying it has been to have this crash four times on me while trying to record this. So uh, that will be a workaround. Switch that to hardware 2.0 because it supports this. Switch your camera and then the sequence should render fine. So now that we have that out of the way, we know it's rendering the correct camera. We can delete the file here that it produced because we're not going to need that anymore. And we can go ahead and set this to have the correct settings. 
So let's come down here and set this to be HG1080. We can set our render settings up here. I believe the settings that I liked was camera anti-aliasing at six, and then four on diffuse, four on specular, and probably four on, actually, I don't think transmission did anything. So six, four, and four. I'm gonna go with these settings. Feel free to set them higher. Like I mentioned, if you wanna crank them up to 10, by all means do so. I'm not gonna do that just because I wanna save a bit of time and I do have to work tomorrow. So if this runs into my work time, uh, I'll need to come back and adjust this. Also remember to bump up your lights. So I'm gonna come into the skylight here and just up the samples there to eight or six. I'll use six to keep this a little bit lower. And then in your directional light, remember to come into the Arnold section there and up the samples to either two or four. I'll use two just to save a bit of time on my end. Once we have that set, we can go to File, Save Scene because we're gonna want that to save. We can come to our Common tab, make sure that this is set to the name.number.extension, so it creates our video file. Set our end frame to 220, or whatever your end frame is, mine happened to be 220. I also like to set this back to frame one just in case and we're ready to render. So at this point, uh, I can make this render view a bit bigger because the 1920 by 1080 likes to take up a lot of space. <laughs> so we'll make that nice and big. We'll come to our render, render sequence, press this button, and we'll walk away. Now, I encourage you to check your first frame to begin with. It will take a while to render just to make sure it's rendering the correct camera and to make sure that the quality looks good enough. So those are gonna be some major things that you are going to want to check because you do not want this to render for 10, 20, 30 hours and come back and realize you have to do the whole thing. So I highly encourage you to do that. You also might want to take your computer off of sleep mode. Uh, sometimes that interrupts the rendering. So just be aware that if you do have a sleep mode, it can be good to turn this off. And if you are rendering on a laptop, I highly encourage you not to render at 1920 by 1080 with these settings. Render at HD 720 with lower settings. Uh, laptops can overheat and melt while doing these really high-end renders. Uh, when it comes to the film industry, they actually use things called render farms to produce these renderings. Uh, it's basically a bunch of computers networked together and they can crunch these frames very quickly. Uh, we don't have access to that. You can use some render farm services, just as a heads up. I don't encourage doing it though, starting out. Uh, it's just not worth paying money when you're learning. So. Uh, learn the hard way <laughs> is my advice. So just be mindful, this is going to take a while. I am going to uh, fast forward so you don't have to sit through 10 hours of me rendering, but you do wanna get that first frame on screen just to check and make sure that all those settings are correct, correct camera, uh, good quality stuff. If you need to cancel this, you can spam escape bar on your keyboard and that will escape out of here and you can cancel it and resume. Okay, uh, so that should about do it. So I'm gonna let this render. All right, so we got our first render out of here. It took a lot of time. Uh, unfortunately, this doesn't actually show the amount of time it took. So I'm gonna let this continue rendering, but uh, just be mindful that if you do a single render out of here, you figure out how long it's gonna take, you can calculate that times uh, your frame number. All right, so as you are working on your render, you may find that you need to stop it and restart it several times in your day-to-day -day life. If you're like me, I work and teach from the same computer which is why it's a little bit messy, maybe compared to other classes you've seen. So I have been having to stop this and restart it over the course of about three or four days now to get it working. So just to give you an idea, I've been letting it render overnight. That's how long it's taking me on my machine. So when I mentioned you might want to do like an HD 720 render and throttle some of the settings to be faster, I'm not kidding. It takes a long time to render. Welcome to making movies, right? We don't even have that much going on in the scene. So just to show you, uh, it's still rendering. If I come in here to my section four project and go into images, you'll see that we have rendered all the way down here to 150. We're actually currently on 150 right now because I did just restart this, but I decided to do a little breakaway recording so you could see how to restart this in case you have to. So let's say we wanna restart this. When you come back to your machine, if it's still rendering, you're gonna to wanna to cancel it. So the way you cancel it is just click into Maya and start spamming the escape key. And if you start spamming that, you'll see it will cancel the render sequence and it will stop. 
Now, an issue with that is if you take a look at one of these images, it's going to be partial data. So uh, with EXRs, you can open these in Photoshop. If you double click, it usually defaults to Photoshop. I don't have Photoshop loaded, so it's going to launch that currently. Uh, so we'll see that when it opens. And generally, it's going to give an error or it may not have any information in it at all. But it's worth checking whatever your last frame was to see if it finished. You'll notice when you bring in EXRs, they ask if you want to bring in NS transparency or alpha. I usually just go with the default of transparency, and you'll see we get this error could not open. And that's because the program's not finished. So the thing about EXRs, since they contain multi-pass data, there's probably something there. But because it's not complete, it's technically not there. So we're going to right click and delete that to clear out the last frame. And then coming back into Maya here, we're going to navigate up here to our render settings, open this up. And then in here, you're just going to want to set your start and end frame to whatever frame you were on last that finished. So I know 149 finished, but it's worth checking just to make sure because it's been a few days since I actually looked at this. I'll go ahead and open this up and just make sure you have a complete frame. There's no errors and it looks like it's just fine. So what that means is we don't need to re-render 149. We need to render everything after that. And that's one of the great things about image sequences. We're going to go ahead and set that start and end range to be correct. So I'm going to set this to 150 to 220. Now everything else should be fine. Okay. The only thing we need to change is that start and end frame range because that is different now. Okay, we're no longer going from one. And then uh, you can close Maya, reopen it as much as you need to. By the way, I have closed this down several times. Uh, the last time I rendered this was Tuesday, and it's currently Friday. So it's been a few days, closed it down, reopened it, we're ready to go. Really nice. Uh, once you've set that time range again to be correct, and you want to start it on whatever frame you left off on, uh, so remember my last solid frame, my last finished frame was 149. I need to do 150 now. We can come up here, we can go to render, and we can just check render sequence again. Now, I suggest uh, checking it after the first render. Generally speaking, the camera doesn't reset, but every now and then you will have that issue where the camera does revert back to what it was doing beforehand. So you want to check and make sure uh, it's not doing that. So that is how you can cancel a render and resume a render uh, when you have these large projects like what we're doing here. And this is even really a large project, by the way. Uh, 1 to 220 here, if you think about it, it's less than 10 seconds. So you can tell for really big projects, it's going to take a lot longer, uh, which is why I showed you the hardware 2.0 in the first sections of this course. It's always good to experiment with different renderers, uh, depending on what you're trying to do. Obviously, if you're doing a feature film, you're going to utilize Arnold with, or other renderer like RenderMan or V-Ray. They all take a long time, by the way. None of those are fast. Uh, bump those settings up real high and get it to look as beautiful as possible and then just use a render form to crunch frames. But if you're gonna go the route of a television show or if you're gonna do like a webtoon series, uh, you might opt a different pathway, uh, maybe using lower quality render settings, maybe using a stylistic approach that will allow you to render faster, uh, but still have good quality. Uh, some companies, a uh, really big push in the industry right now is using game engines, using things like Unreal Engine uh, to create videos, to create movies even. So that's a big push in film and uh, just across all forms of video and entertainment industry. So just be patient with it, uh, you know, let it render. If you need to stop it and you need to come back, that is the process. So hopefully that gets you set up. Uh, just remember you hop in, you spam the escape key. Then after that, you delete whatever the last frame was that didn't finish. You reset your frame range and then you just render sequence again. You can close Maya, you can reopen it. You can leave the computer alone for a few days. Uh, but like I mentioned, definitely sit through and check and make sure that the render is correct. So the last X frames of your animation aren't wrong.